Hey, this is Joe, and today let's talk about taking the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix, or any square matrix that's larger than 3x3. Three three. But first, let's work through an example of taking the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix. Here, I have a 3x3 three three matrix, and I'm told I have to take the determinant of it. And what you do when you're taking the determinant is you first select a row or a column that you're going to use to calculate your determinant. And in this example, we're going to use this top row here. So that's why I kind of have them in different colors. So I'm going to be using row 216 to calculate my determinant. And so the first thing I do is I'm going to bring each one of these values down here below. So I have 2, I have 1, and I have 6. Next, we use this sign chart I have over here to help us determine whether we take a positive or negative version of each one of these values. And it's just important to note that the sign value always has positive in the upper left hand corner and then it just alternates as you move left or go down between positive and negative throughout the entire matrix. And what we do is we just take the corresponding sign in the same position and put it in front of each value. So I'm going to put the positive sign in front of 2 so it's going to leave it as positive 2. Put the negative sign in front of our 1. It's going to make it negative 1. And I'm going to put the positive sign in front of 6 so it's going to leave it as positive 6. Now that we've brought the values down from the row or column that we're using, and then we change their signs according to the sign chart, we now are going to multiply each one of these values by the minor of each one of these positions. And the minor of, say, this value 2 that's in the upper left-hand corner is the determinant of the matrix we get left over if we cross out the row and the column associated with the position of this value 2. So if I cross out row 1 and column 1, all I'm left with is this little square matrix 2, 7, 5, 4. And so what I'm going to multiply my 2 by is the determinant of this kind of leftover matrix that I get. And then we do that for each other value. So for my position 1, I cross out row 1, column 2, and I'm left with negative 1, 7, 3, 4. So I multiply 1 by the determinant of that. And finally, I have this value 6. I cross out row 1, column 3, and I'm left over with negative 1, 2, 3, 5. And so I'm going to multiply 6 by the determinant of that. Notice I'm able to kind of reduce the size of my determinant when I did all these steps so far, right? I have the determinant of this 3 by 3 initially, and now I have numbers multiplied with the determinant of 2 by 2 matrices. And if you recall, we can calculate the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix pretty easily. Remember, if we use this kind of guide matrix here, this A matrix that has A, B, C, and D values in this position, the determinant of this matrix A is equal to A times D minus B times C. So we can use this as a guide to help calculate all these different 2 by 2 determinants that we have. And if you need a refresher on that, check out this video here. Now, we use this to guide us when we're calculating these 2 by 2 determinants. It looks like in this first determinant, 2, 7, 5, 4, I would multiply 2 by 4, and I'd get 8, and then I would subtract 7 times 5, so I get 8 minus 35. In my next determinant, I would multiply negative 1 by 4, that gives me negative 4, and I subtract 7 times 3, so I subtract 21. And finally, I would multiply negative 1 by 5, and I'd get negative 5, and I subtract 2 times 3, so I subtract 6. And I've calculated all these determinants. So now all we really have to do is simplify these numbers down here, and we get our final answer. We get 8 minus 35 is negative 27. Negative 4 minus 21 is negative 25. Negative 5 minus 6 is negative 11. 2 times negative 27 is negative 54, negative 1 times negative 25 is positive 25, and 6 times negative 11 is negative 66. And then if we add all these numbers together, we get negative 95. So the determinant of our 3 by 3 matrix is negative 95. So let's review the general process so that we can work with bigger matrices than just 3 by 3 matrices. This process could be used for any n by n matrix of any size. So the process was we select a row or a column that we're going to use to calculate the determinant. And generally, the more zeros, the better. So if you can find a column or a row that has a bunch of zeros, that's the one you're going to want to select. Then you find the sign that you're going to put with each one of these values from the sign matrix. 
And remember, this sine matrix always starts with a positive in the upper left-hand corner, and then it alternates positive and negative as you move left to right or up and down. So after you've selected the row or column we're using and you've applied the signs from the sign matrix, you then multiply that result by the minor of each one of the values. And recall, the minor is just the determinant of the submatrix that is left over when you eliminate the row and column of the value you're working with. So let's work with a bigger matrix. Let's work with this 4x4 four four matrix. Say we're told to find the determinant of this. Well, we first want to identify a row or a column that we want to calculate the determinant with. Do you see any row or column that has a bunch of zeros? Well, it looks like this third column has three zeros and one value. I'd say let's just work with that. So we bring these values down to the bottom. We have zero, zero, two, and zero. Now we can use the sign matrix to assign positive and negative values to each one of these values we first got. So if you look, we're in the third column, so the top value in the third column of our sign matrix is positive, so I'm going to put a positive with the zero, I'm then going to put a negative with the second zero, I'm going to put a positive with the two, and then I'll put a negative with this bottom zero. Now that we've done those two steps, we multiply each one of these values with the minor of each one of these positions. So the minor of our first zero is going to be the determinant of what's left over when I cross out row one, column three, and so it looks like we have this here, so we bring this down as the determinant. For our second zero, the minor is what's left over when we cross out row two, column three, and so it looks like I'm left with this, and so I'll take the determinant of that. For our two, we cross out row three, column three, and we're left over with this, and so we multiply by the determinant of this. And for our final zero, we cross out row four, column three, and we're left over with this, and so we multiply by the determinant of it. Now, it's important to note that when you're taking the determinant of something, your result's just going to be a number. So if you look at three of these things down here, we have zero times the determinant of these things. So what happens when you multiply something by zero? Well, you're just left with zero. So the nice thing about working with this column is we can replace this first value with zero, this second value with zero, and then this final value with zero, and all we're left with is two times this three by three determinant. And so now basically what we've done so far is we've reduced the size of the determinant that we're working with, and we would just continue in the same fashion to solve it completely. We have the determinant of our four by four matrix is actually just equal to two times the determinant of two, one, two, five, two, one, three, four, six. So we just continue working with this three by three determinant. Since there are no zeros in any of these positions, I can just work with row one again. So let's bring row the row one values down. Now we have two times this determinant. So remember, whatever we get, we multiply by two. So I'm gonna put two on the outside. But we're going to bring down the 2, we're going to bring down the 1, and we're going to bring down the 2. Next, we use the sign chart to assign signs to this row. Well, since we used row 1 again, we're going to use the top row of the sign chart. So I put the positive sign with the first 2, so that's just going to remain 2. Put a negative sign with the 1, so I get minus 1. And I put the positive sign with the other 2, and I get positive 2 again. Then we multiply each one of them by their minors. So we cross out row one, column one for this first two, and we're left with this determinant. For the one, we cross out row one, column two, and we're left with this determinant. And for the final two, we cross out row one, column three, and we're left with this determinant. So for these two by two determinants, again, we can do that diagonal multiplication and subtraction process. And so we get two times six minus four times one is gonna give me 12 minus four. 5 times 6 minus 1 times 3 is going to give me 30 minus 3. 5 times 4 minus 2 times 3 is going to give me 20 minus 6. And all we have left to do is simplify. 12 minus 4 is going to be 8. 30 minus 3 is going to be 27. And 20 minus 6 is going to be 14. Notice for all these, I've been carrying this two on the outside. It's very important that you bring that along with it and you don't forget about it whenever you're calculating these things. But let's finish up the inside of the parentheses. So I have 2 times 8, which is 16. I have negative 1 times 27, which is negative 27. 
and I have 2 times 14, which is positive 28. And if I add those numbers together, I just get 17, and 2 times 17 is going to be 34. And so the determinant of our 4 by 4 matrix is going to be 34. So hopefully that helps clear a little bit up whenever you're working with square matrix determinants that are of size 3 by 3 or larger. I'm Joe, and thanks for spending some time with me.